right I'm probably also gonna knock this area out here uh, I don't think I have any kind of fancy separation on that in terms of where like I think it's all part of the same UV shell yeah but it does have some polygons but the polygons aren't really lined up perfectly so I think I'm just gonna have to do another uh, paint pass with this so you can see I just, so I guess up and down. So if you hold control and right mouse button and you go, come on, wake up. You go left and right, it's gonna be brush size and up and down is like softness or something. So you can see the hardness. I want the hardness to be very, very hard, very crisp. And then uh, you can also use the mouse scroll. There we go. Cool. All right, so for this material, I'm going to go ahead and just shrink this down a bit. Hopefully you guys have more, more space with which to work. So we want to go uh, with this, this fill here. Let me open it back up. So we've got our mask stuff that's sort of uh, controlling where this entire layer is applied. And then inside of our folder, I said layer, I meant folder, uh, we have this fill. So the fill is what I actually want to modify to make it look like this. So the first thing we need to do is let's make it kind of black and let's make it kind of shiny. Maybe not that shiny, but it's got like this is a, a lot of round curves so it picks up the, uh, the reflected areas a little better. This one might not need to be quite that shiny. And then let's throw a little bit of a noise pattern on there with our height. So I'm going to come over to procedurals and just type in noise. And there are so, so many for us to choose from. And what I'm really looking for is just like a generic sort of Photoshop noise dirtiness here. white noise that looks promising yeah okay because again it's like super detailed and not really detailed but super fine right like it's just kind of breaking up the highlight so we'll grab white noise I'm gonna drag it directly onto height and you can see it goes crazy so I'm actually not going to use this layer for my my height control I'm gonna add a new layer so I'm just gonna control D because it's just gonna be kind of a a regular old fill, I'm going to turn everything off on this layer except for my noise and I'm going to, or, uh, my height, and I'm going to give it some kind of bigger height value. And you can see nothing really changes. And the reason for this is you've got to have two things that are of different heights in order to see the height difference because it's just, it's in the uh, kind of the, the lighting, not, not actually changing the geometry. And then I'm going to add a black mask. And then I'm going to add a fill in that mask. And into that fill, I will put the noise. And the benefit of doing it this way is it's just a little bit easier to dial it in. So I can, first of all, I have control over how much bump I'm getting. And because it's a fill, it's easy for me to come in and ooh, slightly increase the amount of tiling I'm getting. And I think I'm gonna punch up the noise just a little bit. So 0.02, let's try like 0.04. Still looks like it needs to tile a bit more than that. And this may just be kind of a limitation of my my text resolution because each one of these over here that looks like it's like down to the pixel and I probably just don't have enough texture resolution to get uh, that fine like if I tile it 16 times see it doesn't get finer it just gets a little bit it's just kind of a uh, you know it feels like it maybe it's less intense and that, that's not really what I'm going for so this kind of may just be a feature of it being a, a 2k map but that's fine because really it's it's just a, a little bit of a, a subtle hint there and so now what I want to do is I want to 
chip some of it off and I could go in and paint it but what I'd really rather do is chip it off procedurally so I'm going to come up back to my mask here right of the overall powder coat group and I'm going to add a fill and you can see because the fill has got kind of a default 0.5 value it's basically we're just looking right through it now and we're going to go to smart masks and I want to find one that's like a little bit edgy. So we've got our edges, edges dusty. Uh, we'll just start with edges strong and see what happens. So we've got fill. I, th I don't actually, let me think about this for a second. Right, so I don't want to put a fill there. I was confusing myself. We will in a second add a fill, but for now we can actually take the edges strong directly up into here and we're gonna need to do something so this is our color selection so that's our primary mask and we've got a paint which is like dialing in where the, the primary mask is showing up and then we have these other two things what we've got to do it looks like the sharpen is just kind of talking to whatever this mask is we've got a right now this mask is completely overwriting actually it looks like it's just inverted so what we're gonna do so uh, let me just back up a little bit you can see if I turn on the mask, I've got a very nice edge mask, which is actually exactly what I was hoping to see, but it is going the wrong direction, right? I don't want to see, the, again, white is opacity and black is, is transparency. I don't know if I've said that already, but um, hopefully that's uh, intuitive. Basically, I've got to go into my mask and I've got this global invert right at the top and I just want to click it. But what you can see is it's applying to everything. Like all of this stuff here has, has basically been paved over by what's going on with this top mask. So I have to come over to my layer blending and set this to uh, probably multiply. Where is multiply? Yeah, so what this is doing is it's basically taking the values from this mask and rather than paving over everything underneath it, it is multiplying it. So the way you can think about multiply, it's exactly the way multiply works. We have, in this case, we've basically converted all of these little spots where the edge is punching through to a black value because we inverted it. And then we are, and black is zero. So we're just basically multiplying all of the pixels underneath that stack or underneath that layer by zero. So they turn black. And then we're, so, so we're basically modifying the stuff that's over that's already here rather than messing with anything else. It's a way to kind of blend these things together and it is extremely useful. So I'm gonna, this is okay. Like some of this stuff here, like it all, right now it's very uniform, right? So it feels a little bit on the procedural side. Uh, and like we would never, I mean, I'm sure there's some scenario, but generally speaking, you would never have like a perfectly clean, consistent edge wear along every single edge. I always uh, like to see a little bit more than just whatever a default mask is directly out of the smart masks. In the next video, we will go ahead and break this up a little bit more, uh, including throwing some variation in the, the roughness and uh, uh, stick around for that.